What's up, besties? Welcome back to another episode of I E M Besties. I'm Steph, and I'm here with Vanessa and Jose. You guys may know his ooh, ooh. say say sing a note so people know your voice. Sing a note, like ah. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> you guys might have to recognize that from ninety three point nine. Yes. Nice. Sorry, Vanessa. I didn't even. I just went straight into it, baby girl. No, I appreciate that. Okay. Oh, my bad. My bad. My bad. No, I'm a little that. excited. We haven't been here in a week, so. I know. Dude, we didn't film last week. I'm sorry, besties. We saw the DMs. You know, a lot of people were like, "Where's the video? Where is the pod?" I'm so sorry. It was that was my bad. Oh, that was you. Yeah, it was sick. Mm, okay. It was both of us. Low key, it was a lack of communication, and it'll never happen again. Never. <laughs> I'm sorry. We but, got HR wrote us up. Mm-hmm. You know, brought us so, into the office. Yeah, it was really bad, but but we're here. Okay. We're thriving. Um. We're so <laughs> that was. <laughs> So we're here and we're queer. <laughs> you can fuck out. Oh my. <laughs> so um, you were mentioning you were nervous. Do you feel like it's different being like here and on, on the radio? Uh, actually, it's very similar, mm-hmm. but it's different just being on this end. Just because mm-hmm. when I'm on radio, I like just talk back or interview people. Like I'm always the one like with the questions and whatnot, right. never knowing what they're going to ask me. You yeah. know? So I'm like, I always like to guide the conversation this time. I'm going to let y'all take the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like that? Um, like interferes a lot kind of like, have you been on a podcast before? I have my own podcast too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool, yeah, cool, yeah. Cool. So it, like I said, it's different because I'm always the one interviewing, not the right. one being interviewed. Mm. But have you been like as a guest? This is my second time in oh, a podcast. Oh, okay, okay. Do you feel like you tend to, though, like, lead the conversation? <sighs> I, I'm going to try not to. I kind of like that. Right, I was cool. going to say that. Yeah. I like oh, that, really? too. I do. It just, I feel like because we, at, at least me, I always want to make the guests feel, like, the most comfortable. Uh-huh. So I'm like, if you want to just take over, like, that's totally okay. Like, I'm here for you. <laughs> and and I think I also love that that's kind of, like, how a conversation flows, right? You know, like, it switches off. And I don't mind that happening here. Yeah. Right. I feel like um some people in the past have made the comment like oh like do you mind if like the guest starts taking the lead like does that make you feel weird does that make you feel like oh like it's your party you should be taking the lead i'm like mm-hmm. hell no like i like it i like feeling interviewed i don't mind me it. too I'm, I'm, i like being the center of attention <laughs> <Asking questions. laughs> yeah and i think i was also a little nervous just because i don't really tend to speak english a lot like oh. everything is in spanish and so i'm over here like okay remember the code switching jose remember the code switching. oh my god no way <laughs> yeah. Wait, it's code switching well, I mean, when you switch from like Spanish to English, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Entonces suelo hablar más el español cuando estoy al aire, and even in the podcast, mm. I definitely do a lot of Spanglish. Oh, so. okay, okay. Ninety-three point three is a Spanish. Ninety-three point nine. My bad, yeah. my bad. It's, no, a, it's Spanish. Yeah, it's Spanish. Oh. It's Spanish radio station. Obviously, with a little bit of English, and I try mm. porque se me sale lo pocho. Right. Yeah. But mainly in Spanish, and then I also have to be aware of like who I'm working with that they're right. mainly uh, Spanish speaking. And on your podcast, it's mostly Spanish as well? Well, it's mostly English, but I do tend to go into Spanish. And then I have like a season coming up where I travel to Mexico and it's all in Spanish. So that was oh, a challenge in itself, too. Uh, what part of Mexico are you from? Michoacan. Ooh. Shout out to all the people from Michoacan Ooh. over there, the banda. Shout out. <laughs> um, no, you're not from Michoacan. No, babe. What oh, is Mexico. that? Oh, okay. But what state is that? Baja California? Yeah, Baja California. Man, he goes yeah. in Baja California. Yeah, it's a oh, no way. Yeah. Dude, my geography is terrible. I'm Same. so glad you said that, Same. though, because I was me. like, okay, I'm glad she said Baja California. <laughs> <laughs> You're all, I definitely like, know this. Uh, yeah, I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> so, have you always wanted to be in radio, or how did that come about? So, I've always wanted to work in entertainment. I just didn't know what in what, you know? Right. So, I don't know if it's a story for like all of you, but like, I grew up watching novelas. Mm-hmm. And and it's funny enough because every time people ask me like, oh, you used to watch novelas, which I was very embarrassed about being a guy mm-hmm. and growing up and saying like, oh, yeah, uh, like, I know what you're talking about type of stuff <laughs> to my friends. But now that I grew up, I'm like, dude, it's it wasn't even my mom who was watching them. It was my dad. Like, my dad was like <gasps> on the TV yeah. watching the novela. So we would just sit down and he would always like the, the ranchero vibe novelas. Mm. So like, that's what like I'm into now. And even like now we call them series, even though. Oh, right. Yeah. Dude, my, my dad loves saying that he would be like. Like, oh, um, I'd be like, oh, que novela estás viendo? No es una novela, es una serie. And I'm like, this is the same shit, girl. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, it is. So then, obviously, growing up, watching El Gordo y la Flaca on Univision, Univision was definitely 
my goal. I wanted to like work in TV. I wanted to be an actor. Like I think everybody after Rebelde was like, I, I want that life. Yeah. Like, you know, I want to like party, fuck around and whatnot. So I like literally told my parents at the age of 15, I was like, I want to go to Mexico and I want to go to El Sea and I want to be an actor. And they're like, that's pendejo. Yeah. <laughs> that's pendejo. We don't have the money. We're not going to send our 15 year old son to uh, Mexico City all by himself. Right. And I was okay. like, what? Devastating. How course. dare you? Like, like, fuck you, mom. Exactly. I was like, it's my <laughs> dream. Yeah, which is funny, too, because I mean, you grew up here, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, you know, most people want to come from there here, and you're like, now nah, I want to be. Because I always felt that very strongly, too. Like, uh -huh. I wanted to be in the Latin yes, industry. Yes. Like, I wanted to be known for being Latina, and I wanted to be in same thing like in novelas too. So I totally get that. But I would oh, be like, so. how the fuck do I even? And did exactly. it low key a lot of times too? Like the acting was so terrible. I'd be like, if they could fucking do it, exactly. I could fucking like, do but it. we see, we be seeing La Rosa de Guadalupe, and I'm oh like, oh my god, I'm I want to be a writer. I should just hit up La Rosa de Guadalupe. Like, Literally. they're como dice el dicho, for sure will hire me. Yes. Like it's so corny. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was like, damn, if they could do it, I can. Yeah. But uh, obviously they did it. So. And another thing, I was very shy. So I was telling mm -hmm. you guys I went to Fontana High School. And mm -hmm. by my junior year, I was like, if I want to freaking go into entertainment, like, I have to stop being so shy. And I had a very thick Mexican accent. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I need to do, like, acting classes or mm -hmm. something if I want to go to acting. So I went, like, to a theater uh, professor and I joined his class. I started doing plays and musicals. And I'm like, oh, shit, this is fun oh, and whatnot. God. And then he helped me with my diction in English. And then when I went to college, I went in as a theater major, like, Ooh. all low-key because mm -hmm. my parents thought I was going to be a doctor. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah. so drama. Like, no, for real. Like, I went in. I first started out as a nursing major. Then I'm like, no, no, no. I'm going to I'm gonna be a doctor just like my parents wanted me to be. Yeah. So then I went into, like, chemistry. Okay. And then I'm like, damn, this shit is fucking hard. <laughs> <laughs> like, I spoke too me, soon. <laughs> so then I was doing a, a little bit of, like, science classes. But, like, theater was, like, my main gig. And Aww. I did that for two years. And then once my friends started graduating from um, being theater, majors i was like they came back they were seeing like the plays that we were doing and i was like yo like so are you booking any commercials and they're like oh we're auditioning and uh you know working at blockbuster at the time you know i just aged myself <laughs> but, but i was like oh hell no like my parents didn't come to this country for me to be working at a blockbuster after college. Right. No shame in that, right? No, of because course. because it happens. But I was like, okay, I'm going to try to figure out how to do this on the side and still make money because I need to help my parents out. Like I, as mm -hmm. the oldest child, I felt that responsibility. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like I started majoring in communications because that was like the easiest thing to do. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is cool and whatnot, but I kind of like money. So I majored in business instead. So I switched my major like four or five times while nice. I was in college. Dope. So I finally ended up being majored in business. One day, Univision came to Cal State San Bernardino, because that's where I went. Uh, go Yodis. And I was like, I want to work with y'all. Like, that's like I want to work with you. How, how do I do it? And they were like, oh, well, I'm going to send you a, a resume. Like, mm -hmm. a, not a resume, an internship program. And I was like, fuck. So I got nervous. I didn't send my resume. Oh. I didn't do it because I felt that imposter syndrome. Oh, I'm like, oh right. shit, like who why are they gonna pick me all the way oh. in the Inland Empire? Oh. And they're all the way in LA. In the Dino. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, in the nice part, the nice part. Yeah, the nice yeah, part. The nice, <laughs> like the northern part. By the mountains. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> by the mountains. Fuck, did Don't I forget, always you know? say that? I like I guess so embarrassed. Not anymore, but in the beginning. <laughs> Like, I would always make a point to be, like, by the mountains, by the university. Yeah. Like, not, like, the lower ghetto part. Now you can say where it snows. All right? Yeah, oh, true. God. It just snowed up there. <laughs> yeah, but so I... So you didn't submit it? No, I didn't. But I promised myself, and I've always been this type of person, to be, like, tenacious. And I said, if they come next year, I'm going all in. So then they did come next year, which was Ooh. the last year that they came to do an event like that. Ooh. Right? So... Then I was I spoke to the person again. They're like, you know what? Stick to uh, Yadira Rosas at the time, and I stuck to her. And she's like, look, you really want to do this? So basically, to make the long like the story shorter, mm -hmm. they had me volunteer, non paid, in different schools. So I would drive to LA to Univision in Culver City, uh, to Cal Poly Pomona, USC, where they had events, and I was just in charge of the volunteers, mm -hmm. right? And yeah, I was able to bring like 70, 50 volunteers at a time from San Bernardino, from 
uh, Cal Poly Pomona from USC because I was so heavily involved in clubs and organizations, mm. fraternity, sorority and mm. whatnot. I was like, let's go. I need y'all to make me look good. Yeah. And I used my network until two years later. They finally like I was applying. Right. I was applying and applying and I kept getting denied and denied. And before um I started my master's program. I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to travel to Europe with my friends. I'm going to do a fucking Euro trip, take a loan. I'll figure out how to pay for it later, right? (laughs) And so I did. And while I was over there, I got the email where it said, you are have not gotten the job again for like the Aww. fifth time. And I, at that point, I was devastated. So I was like, you know what? Fuck you. If you're not going to want me, I'm going to want myself. Yeah. So I started a YouTube channel. Oh. And I started a YouTube channel just to get comfortable with a mic, with a camera. Mm-hmm. And six months later, like... After two years of working with them, six months, I was just focusing on me learning how to edit, learning how to talk in front of a camera, just getting less shy about having these cameras in front of me, right? And then they called me up and they're like, look, we we had somebody just leave. Uh, Can you come in and do like public relations? And I'm like, I just need my foot in the door. Mm -hmm. I got my foot in the door, left my full-time job, paying me at the time $45,000 a year to $15 an hour part-time at Univision. And I was a public relations coordinator for three months because... Uh, I met somebody there and they saw that I was doing YouTube. They knew how I knew how to edit. These were skills that I was acquiring. And they're like, we need a producer for radio, like for their morning show for mm-hmm. Maria Argelia. And I was uh, like, that's on Maria Argelia? Oh, yeah. I was, uh, I was like, yeah. Like, what the hell? Like, I grew up listening to them. Yeah. yeah. So, so then I had to like interview with them. And I didn't know there was other candidates, but I eventually got the job and I was working for them two years. Two years later, I get the call to see if I want to work with Angelica Vale, and that's where I'm currently am. <laughs> Amazing. So, hope I didn't make it too long, right? Dude, that is no, no, no. such a that's good for the plot right the there. Like that right there. Yeah. That was amazing. Mm-hmm. You really just stuck. Could never be me, but Dude, I know, <laughs> no. I was just gonna say that. Imagine where we would be if we never if we quit. were like that. <laughs> What's Yo, your but sign? You're here. <laughs> well, uh, what do you think I am? Like, I how toxic do you think I am? He said he was shy first. Definitely yeah. come out of his bubble. Mm. I don't know. Anything but he's just like anything. a go-getter. Are you Sagittarius? Oh, close, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> we mean close in month or close like in like element. Oh, uh, close in month. I don't so, know anything you're about those. Try to think balance. Libra? Libra? Yes. <gasps> yes. That makes me happy. My son's a Libra. All right, cool. He's a go-getter. Yeah. I hope. I hope he's. I'm surrounded by Libras to me. be honest. Really? Yeah. I used to be, and then uh, I just don't stopped. Tell me. Really? He used Who? to be what? Surrounded by Libras. I was like, who oh. hurt you? No, really. Oh. Anyways, no, I'm just kidding. Um, it was funny because I feel like I always good jump. Like right now, I'm surrounded by Leos. Mm, like just straight goes. Leos everywhere. <laughs> and it's never happened to me before. And I'm a little jealous because I'm an attention seeker. But nah, just kidding. No, I was like, kidding. what's your sign then? Leo. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, we're both but for Leo. a while, I was like surrounded by Libras. And then for a while, I was surrounded by Aquariuses. And right now, specifically, I'm surrounded by Leos. So I don't know what the do fuck that Do you guys believe all that? Like the... I low-key do. I used to feel like, no, not everything. But now, I'm like more than ever, I do feel like it's... I don't know. It just feels like... Obviously, there's some stuff that I can relate to from other signs. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like I could take a little bit from all of them. Mm-hmm. But I, I do feel like for the most part, at least on mine, like what I see in my life, I'm like, damn, Loki does feel legit. Yeah. Like, I just like. I just pick and choose, too. Yeah, I just yeah, like yeah. it. Like, whichever I like the best, I'm like, oh, that's totally me. Yeah. That, that makes sense. <laughs> Definitely an icebreaker for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so what's your side? Um, so you said you've been working for um, that specific for six years, going on six years? For in radio, in the entertainment industry, six years in June. Oh, wow. In June. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's when I like packed my bags and I was like, mom, dad, in two weeks I have to start this new job in LA. And they're like, what? And were they like um, upset? Because I know you were saying that they really wanted you to be like more in the I medical think, field. Well, like a lo- my whole family, because they knew I wanted to like do theater and acting mm-hmm. and whatnot. And uh, eventually they found out I was a major, a theater major in in... Uh, in college and like there was this huge family meeting i swear like i woke up and my whole family was there and i was like yo what's this like this is dope like we're, <laughs> what are we having like uh birria today or <laughs> who, like who's gonna post out the menudo but no like it was literally like my mom my dad my cousins they all came in and they're like dude like you really gonna major in this like no te va a dejar dinero and i was like what the fuck it's a family intervention oh. and i was the only one that they didn't tell yeah uh, that's what- <laughs> i know so so it was definitely for them like oh shit like 
he he's doing it mm-hmm. and then like the money started coming in they're like oh shit he's really doing it and then they see me like working and taking pictures and taking them to concerts for free and now they're like all right he's he's okay yeah yeah you know so it was definitely like when they say who's been your biggest motivator i always say myself like oh, and i, I always that. told my parents i'm like it wasn't you guys I love that. like you guys didn't motivate me at all like I motivated myself because nobody believed in me. Like I was a black sheep yeah. and I had to be that. So then I can help whoever wants to go into radio in the future. Just because like, I didn't have anybody. Nobody yeah. in my family was doing radio. So yeah. Do you, do you um, feel like you were the black sheep or do you think they did that more out of love? I think out of love and obviously necessity because they grew up poor mm. and they didn't want me and my siblings to suffer the way that they did and then to them to see uh tv personalities radio personalities it's such a far-fetched idea yeah. like really like that's what you want to do like it's so impossible only the kids of get to do that mm-hmm. or only people who have connections Connection. and i'm like i don't have connections but i'm gonna make my connections yeah exactly. and i did and now like they're so happy they boast about me and i'm like stop oh like like stop <laughs> yeah because right now that you said like that your fam like your whole big family intervention i thought that was the sweetest thing ever like oh yeah no can <laughs> ever imagine my family being like guys we gotta check in on stephanie yeah. like what is she doing they're just like oh she's good she's right there don't she's worry fine. she'll figure it yeah, out yeah she's gonna figure it out <laughs> are you figuring it out no oh okay Trust slowly me i think we're doing good though yeah, yeah i think i'm doing as best i can yeah for uh-huh. sure sure that's the only thing we can do yeah, yeah yeah um i wanted to say how do you feel like you were able to like be that self-motivator because i feel like a lot of people myself included struggle with that Mm. so what do you think i don't know what helped you be so motivated to just going after what you wanted i think uh for me personally it was all the no's i think the no's have definitely helped me and uh motivated myself just because like i had so many people in high school like make fun of me and sort of like Mm. a little bit of bullying because i was doing theater and whatnot Mm. and at the time it was like the theater people who made me feel good so i was like i'm just gonna gravitate towards them and then it was in college where i had even friends once i started the youtube channel that would make fun of like the name like oh echale youtube Uh, and they would make fun of it and mm. they would poke at the bear and i'm like keep Mm. down poking motherfucker like just watch yeah just watch and now they're like oh okay like so i just love shutting people up Mm, and and, and that just gives me some satisfaction where i'm like i'm not gonna literally tell you like what like i told you but i'm just gonna let like i'm just gonna let my success speak for itself i love so so yeah so it was just a constant uh, amount of no's in that aspect mm-hmm. that i was just like oh okay i'm gonna prove, I'm, it. I'm gonna prove it to myself more than anything yeah. and to everybody else ask me about other aspects of my life and i'm like fuck i'm still struggling <laughs> on that too <laughs> you're good in that yeah, one <laughs> i'm good at that like talk to me about like chasing my dreams i'm good at that yeah yeah damn so all you're saying is i need more haters honestly <laughs> i need more people please comment a lot of negative shit yeah please. only yeah. tell me yeah. that, that i can't comments. do it that i'm not gonna, that we're not gonna make it <laughs> dude loki my dad i feel like has always been that kind of like just very negative like when he feels like we're not mm. doing what we need to be doing mm-hmm. he just says like a lot of mean shit and like one day i was like why do you say a lot of mean shit to me like if you yeah. feel like i'm not doing what you think I should be doing. And he was like, well, when I was a kid, you know, my parents were mean to me and they like, that's what pushed me yeah. to mm. kind of go after and be like, I'm going to prove you guys wrong. I'm going to yeah. do it because he would just get like a lot of like hate from his own parents. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, well, don't do it to me, bitch. Cause it doesn't work. <laughs> I'm going to cry. The opposite. I will cry. I'm depressed. Are I'm you hanging crying? on my threat. Dude, a hundred percent. Like a major cry. Really? Like I'm, I, yeah. Yeah, what, what do you cry at though? Oh, uh, like, what does that mean? Like such a yawn. Like I, you know, it took me such a long time to realize that uh, because I would sometimes have to hold my anger mm. or like hold my sentiment. If I just saw like a sad movie, I'd be like, "Oh fuck, oh. guys, don't cry, guys, don't cry, guys, don't cry." And now that I'm older and I don't give a fuck, and yeah. I'm like, I know who I am. I'm like, oh yeah, so like, fuck, fuck, yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah, that scene was good, dude. I kind of love when guys cry in movies because I'm like, dude, I'm crying. How could you? Like, are yeah, you just you, the, you I know lack you feel it em- too. I know, like, you just lack complete empathy. You can't can't see this fake shit and be mm-hmm. like yo what if that really happened yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. i'd be crying i'm a chiona too yeah, yeah. and honestly i hate it when people are like oh yeah when i was little they'd be like ya va llorar after saying oh. like the most <laughs> fucked up shit you can possibly imagine yeah. or my dad would be like, like what what oh, is that it's a fucking trigger that's what it is <laughs> 
<laughs> like, <laughs> oh, the kid is ready to go down. But, like, what is the point of, like, them doing that to yeah. you? I don't understand it. Because it's like, yeah, bitch, I do want to cry. My eyes are bloodshot <laughs> red yeah. right now, obviously. And I always did. And I was like, I'm not going to fall for it. I'm not going to fall for it. And I always did. Did I- you? I, sorry, I hate like before I cry, like if I'm holding it real bad, like my face starts twitching. I don't know if that oh, happens yeah. to you guys. Like oh. my, my lips, like my face just starts twitching. Like, dude, just like, oh, like I, I have know. one vein right here. It sometimes pops out in the light, but <laughs> <laughs> I hate that bitch. You know, I'm like livid if she's popping out, but it's okay. She's there. She's pumping. I love her. She's keeping you alive. Exactly. Oh, I, I hate her. Dude, I hate her. I'll edit her out of my pictures. I'm oh, you're really? lying. How yeah. do you do that? Like fucking Paris all the way? You're all mad in pictures? <laughs> 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 no, like sometimes in the sun, like the heat pops it out or whatever. Uh, and I'll just like erase this right here. Yeah. I'll just edit it. I'm sorry. If you guys want your pictures edited, send them to me. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. honestly, like the way you're like speaking about like your journey, uh, a thousand percent, I know that you've gotten to where you are because of just your grit and your, yeah. you know, consistency and your persistence to chase your dreams. But you're also like a really good looking guy. Do you feel oh, like, do thanks. you feel like that, do you feel like that helps? Do you feel like that's Ego. necessary? Uh, you know what? I never even, like to this day, I don't even consider myself good looking. So really? thank you. I appreciate that cumplido. Really? Like, yeah. <laughs> I definitely get it, uh, you know what, on the DMs because I work mm. in radio, but then you just don't know if it's because you work in radio oh, or like, thousand percent. or so many people are like, yo, let me take you out on a date, which I appreciate the women's initiative and whatnot, but uh, it, it's so hard to kind of be like, fuck, what do, do, do you really like? Want are you just to trying to, to use do? me for a free concert? Mm-hmm. Or, or do you just want to get to like the people that I know? And now that I work with certain people, it's like I have to be a lot more ca- careful what yeah, I do right. and who I go out with, which is amazing, but it also like hinders you in that aspect. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I've never used it to my yeah. advantage. I think more than anything, it's I've always felt... I guess you could say like ugly and unattractive until I started building confidence in myself. Mm -hmm. And that started happening once I joined a fraternity in college, if I'm being honest. I'm like, all right, y'all give me the confidence because I didn't have any in myself. You know, I had the confidence to go out and do what I wanted, but confidence socially, that was never me. Mm. Has it happened to you where you've dated someone and you've realized that they had the wrong intention, that they were just kind of like using you? Oh, of course. It's happened? Oh yeah, it's happened. (laughs) Where they're like, oh, so I met them and we went out out for coffee because i just wanted to be very public in places and um yeah so we would like we started talking and whatnot and then like two days later um, they texted me and they sent me a picture of a concert they're like hey i was thinking we should go and Shut i'm like up. we just met and you're already sending me stuff for like concert yeah. stuff i that's a red flag for me right yeah. you know and then I've had the opposite where I've dated people and it's radio, it's podcasting. You kind of talk about it publicly because you have to be as 100% real to a certain extent. I had this person that I met through radio because there was a whole contest on Omar Argelia. Like, oh, we're looking for a date for Jose Quintero. He's an eligible bachelor, whatever. And I found somebody we dated. But then when, because it started in radio, oh. like... They kept asking me, like, hey, yo, how's this person? And I would always be like, yeah, she's fine. Like, she's Mm. cool. But she didn't listen often. So her friends would be like, yo, they talked about you today. And she would be like, what'd y'all talk about? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, they just asked about you. Well, tell them not to. And I'm like, well, you got to understand. Like, Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways, just we, we ended it. So I had to go public on radio and say, like, hey, we ended it. We're still cool. We're still friends. And then this is when I realized, like, dang, the power of, like, radio and social media. And then mm. the people who I'm working with, they literally started flooding her DMs and saying, like, fácil llegaste, si fácil te fuiste. <gasps> and I was like, yo, y'all need to stop. What? Like, they just started going Bullying? after her. Yes. And I'm like, dude, this is not even what I'm about. Yeah. And y'all started yeah. literally, like, digging her grave. And we just ended it nicely. So then she never wanted to speak to me again that's insane. you're gonna hear on a podcast you, the reddit am i an asshole like that's gonna yeah. be your story damn she's gonna message you like i saw you talking again about on the podcast <laughs> on the podcast i know you i'll just... be like yo come back <laughs> like you were good time do you feel like it's um hard to make genuine kind of connections like that in in radio at times like i definitely do i have my core people that i work with mm-hmm. uh my co-workers and then you obviously know the radio listeners that call each and every day and like you start f- forming like some bond because they know so much about your life now mm-hmm. uh and then when you meet them in person it's cool uh but then you definitely have to 
I, I don't know, like just be weary of people, mm. you know? And that's just me on a little scale. I can't imagine like Angelica, you yeah. know? Like definitely s- trust issues. I feel so uncultured when you guys are name dropping because I have no clue. Oh. Who it's because when I was younger, like oh, um, you. a lot of people, that's why I didn't know that much, I guess, like pop culture from the 2000s because I was only listening to like 107.5. Like oh, that was you. my radio station. Same. That's the only reason I know like music. Like that's why, like I can pinpoint exact. I was at a Chevron the first time I ever heard Juanes. It was on 107.5. Yeah. Like that's the only thing I listened to. My mom didn't let me listen to uh, like American yeah. music, I guess. Same. Oh, wow. Honestly, same. Yeah. Uh, so I grew up on 101.9, which was like banda. Yeah, even corridos. that, my mom was like, Quita esa chingadera. Oh. Like, my mom was very like romantico, so oh, it was okay. always 107.5. Like, yeah. that was the radio station. So, Angelica Vale is uh, Ugly Betty for Mexico. Oh. Yeah. So, okay, she's okay. Mexico, Latin America's Ugly Betty. And you work with her? Yeah, yeah. So, she's on air. Uh, oh, she's a radio me. host? Yeah, yeah. So, we're co hosting together. You know oh, who she is? I do know. I do. Wait, oh, okay. when you said Ugly Betty, I was like, oh, oh I was like, let me fun. show you. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. That's so sick. Yeah. I love that novella. Yeah, I was I like, loved so did it I. So much. Imagine me when I got like interviewed by her and I was just like, <gasps> like, are you kidding me? I was like, I don't care if I don't get the job. Like, I'm just good here for the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so, is she cool? Oh, she's dope. Life? Hell yeah. Like, you know, like sometimes they say, like, don't meet your heroes because yeah. mm-hmm. they're fucking assholes. No, no, no. I could, I agree. And I've met a couple people. But she was definitely one of the few people in the industry that she's like, she's got your back. She Aww, is there for women sweet. empowerment. She is like defending her team, and I've seen it. Aww. And she's just opened her doors. And I've told her multiple times, I'm like, you know what? I admired you so much as an artist, mm-hmm. but I am so happy you let me know and get let me get to know the woman you are, mm-hmm. like the mother that. you are. Like that is way better. See, like, even that is so crazy to me because, like, how Saul just met Jaime Camille and oh, now, yeah. like, Angelica Valle. I'm like, <gasps> my mind is exploding right that now. Means, all right, guys, we're going to take a quick break to shout out our sponsors at Manscaped. Ladies, our friends at Manscaped are here with a deal you can't pass over this Easter season. They've got the tools to give the man in your life the beautifully decorated eggs of his dreams. Just because it's Easter doesn't mean it's okay for him to hide his manhood behind all that grass. Make sure his downstairs lawn is mowed and get him feeling sweet as candy by going to manscaped.com and getting 20% off plus free shipping with code BESTIES. No, really? Honestly, their products are so good. My little brother went into our room and he tried to steal Alex's <laughs> nose hair trimmer. And he was like, you need to get me one. And I was like, girl, okay. <laughs> it's time to put all your eggs into the perfect basket with the Performance Package 4.0 by Manscaped. Inside this ball care bunny basket, you'll find their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker 2.0 ear and nose hair trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold all his goodies. The Lawnmower 4.0 is an electric trimmer. It has their proprietary advanced skin safe technology that is designed to trim hair on loose skin. The Lawnmower 4.0 is also waterproof and equipped with an LED light so you can keep eyes on those eggs even in the dark. The Easter Bunny dropped off an extra special gift with Performance Package by adding the upgraded Weed Whacker 2.0 nose and ear hair trimmer, which helps reduce nicks, snags, and tugs in his delicate nose and ear holes. This package also comes with their Crop Preserver, Ball Deodorant, and Crop Reviver Ball Toner. Yeah, you heard that right. This is Ball Deodorant that can change his life and yours potentially. April is Easter, but it's also Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. Manscaped has partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to bring awareness to testicular cancer, men's health, and early cancer detection. Manscaped is committed to raising awareness for the most common form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35 and giving support for fighters, survivors, and families impacted by testicular cancer as a part of their We Save Balls initiative. So save 20% off and free shipping with the code BESTIES at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code BESTIES at manscaped.com. Hop into the best deal of the year with Manscaped. We now return to your regular scheduled programming. We're going to get real close to them to meet them soon. Oh, Dude, Jaime Camil, I'm that. sorry, but he should he should come on the show. Jaime Camil? Oh, dude, every time he'll text me. Let me see if he picks up. 
No, oh, shut shut up. Up. I, I, right now. Oh I literally God. scolded Saul for that. I was like, oh my God, I love Jaime Camille so much. Yeah. And she has mentioned him on the show. She was like, I was like, why didn't you FaceTime her? No, literally. I was very upset. Oh, but shut up. it's okay. It's okay. Like even Angelica Valle, I'm just like, oh, because it's like kind of like the same thing. Like it's people that in your mind, they're so unattainable. Mm -hmm. Like you're like, when, when am I ever going to know yeah. someone who knows Angelica Valle? You know yeah. what I mean? Like but stuff like, exactly. I know. We're going to be those girls taking advantage. I'm no, sorry. do it. <laughs> Honestly, hey, y'all are dope. Y'all are dope as fuck. So Thank definitely. You. No, I'm just kidding. But that's really, really cool. Was um do did any of your friends kind of change when you started, I guess, co-hosting with someone that's like so oh, and, besides, and adding to that, did any of your friends support you? Because I feel like one thing that me and her have mentioned is that when we started this podcasting journey, the people that we expected to be supportive mm. were not. Yeah. And people that were like more like strangers. Like more like high vibe friends were like were the ones that were really yeah. supportive, and we feel like we just kind of noticed that. And we're like, what the heck? It, no, it, you're completely right. I think what I had was a great group of friends, like a great core group of male friends specifically, mm -hmm. that uh, they supported me literally driving with me to different events while I was interning uh, for Univision. So yeah. I would say those are my core group of friends. And obviously there are friends that like, yo, I expected a little bit more from you, but yeah. I don't really care anymore. Like as long yeah. as I got like my two, three homies who were willing to drive with me uh, four or five hours sometimes in traffic, like I am so grateful for them. Have friends changed now? Hell yeah. I have friends from high school that are like, yo, Jose, I just heard you on the radio. That's so dope. And they try to make a uh, conversation. And then obviously I'll have a conversation back. But the mm -hmm. minute they start hitting me up like, yo, you guys have XYZ mm -hmm. tickets? Uh, I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah. your attention. Um, were these friends like the, were they kind of, like, were their goals kind of the same as yours, the ones who were driving in traffic with you, or they're just, like, ride-or-die homies? No, ride-or-die. Like, definitely one is working in IT, the other one is working at a school, the other one's a therapist. <laughs> so Like me. I'm going to need his number. Okay. No, uh, what kind of therapist? Uh, he's Well, he's doing drug, like, um, oh. like mental health with, mm. with substance abuse. I there might need his number, actually. Oh. Not for me, but oh, I know. I was going to oh. say, like, you good? I'm and like, Dave, hey, do you want to talk about it? Guys, this is an intervention right uh, now. Like, That's that's so dope because I feel like um, now I think that I'm hanging around. I feel like my creativity has definitely been flowing lately. Uh -huh. And I don't think that would have happened if it wouldn't have been like around if I wasn't around like all these people yeah. now because I had never I, w I think I mentioned this in the last last podcast, like because I had never met someone who had even a little bit foot in the door of yeah. social media, YouTube or even like the radio. Like I never thought it was something that was so that I had to work, I mean, obviously I had to work hard, but really not, I thought it was a dream. Yeah. Like it was almost, like sometimes when I do this, it feels like a fever dream. When we do stuff, I'm like, I'm not really here. Like this isn't really happening. But uh -huh. once I started surrounding myself with the right kind of people, that's why I asked. Once I started surrounding myself with the right kind of people, I was like, oh, okay. Like yeah. you just have to find the people that are going to put you there. Exactly. Like push you there. And if the space isn't there, you create it. You'd be so right. surprised. Like I'm sure when Saul started this space, it was like he created that space for everyone who's in their po in his podcast mm -hmm. now that it's like, all right. And now you have the opportunity to like meet so many cool people. For sure. And that's how it is. And You're little like, by little, it's like networking. Me. <laughs> You're like, like me right now. You're welcome. <laughs> Y'all definitely have had really cool <laughs> people on the show. Yeah. Who has been your um, favorite, I guess, person that you've interviewed? Uh, ooh, favorite person that I've interviewed. And I, worst. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I'll tell you who the worst. Today. I'll tell you who the worst person I've met in like in the industry because I don't think I've interviewed this person. Okay. Uh, in terms of like interviewed, I've interviewed amazing people and amazing artists, but definitely one of my biggest like celebrity crushes. <laughs> Uh, and you might know her, you may not. Uh, Alejandra Espinosa. So she's Nuestra Belleza face. Latina. So she was like, uh, she's also a host and whatnot. I don't know, uh, but for TV. Oh, oh Missy, God. God. Oh yeah, yeah. I she's mean, a beauty. I feel like she's a lot of so people. So beautiful. Oh my God. I feel she like a lot like of people I know by face only. Not okay. Me too. Me too. Yes. So when I first met her, I was like, oh, like I'm gonna you shoot my gorgeous. shot. Oh no, she's married with kids. With kid, you know. <laughs> you know, okay. and I respect that. <laughs> but, I'm a, a lot of people are not happily married. <laughs> well, she, well, I mean, she looks happily married and whatnot. So the opportunity came. I interviewed her. And then I got to interview her like a couple times. Then I just like ran into her in random parts and then we oh. just kind of kept in touch right so she's definitely become like a friend in the industry, industry. so nice. like that is freaking dope a person and i've said it in multiple occasions that i was 
just like nah no, fucking with. This is not it. Yeah, it was. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna disappoint a lot of people, and maybe I'll get canceled or fired or whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> el gordo de Molina from El Gordo y la Flaca. No way. Yes, he just came into Univision one time trying to fire everybody, screaming at the camera people just because they were trying to do their job, and I was just like, homie, I don't fuck with this. Like, yeah, you're humble. You respect people. You treat people how you want to be treated. Like, yeah. and just because you're a celebrity, and that is one of the biggest mm-hmm. things that like Angelica mm-hmm. has taught me. She's treats people with respect, with love, and whatnot. And I'm just like, dude, if she can do it, if she can do it, yeah, yeah. anybody Any, should be able to yeah, do it. Exactly. Yeah. Wow, that sucks. And you know what though? I kind of see it. Yeah, I can feel it. And then one time I had to give him training uh, back back in 2018, like. Because he didn't want to, he was saying the word illegal on air, like on TV. And I'm like, it's undocumented because I was at that time working as like a PR. Yeah. And he's like, pero por qué tenemos que decir indocumentados si son ilegales? And I'm like, bro, your Miami oh. is showing. Oh yeah. my God. He's yeah. Cuban, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. They think they're all Americans. Nah, I'm just kidding. Don't cancel me, Cubans. I love you guys. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. I was like, Damn, the company I work for it was all my Cubans. <laughs> so. You're gonna get us all canceled, dude. <laughs> They're dope though. Love shout out to y'all. Um, that's crazy though. Honestly, um, Alejandra Espinosa, that's her name, right? Yeah. I remember her, like, I remember watching her Nuestra Belleza Latina. Yeah. My cousin actually auditioned for that. She didn't make it, but. <laughs> Tough. Someone commented that the other day. They're like, Steph, go on with Nuestra Belleza. And I'm like, bitch, look at me. Look at my height. That. Like, girl, no, I'm 5'3". They, five, three. they I think, take everybody now. I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh. I feel like the whole height thing is, like, not really a requirement anymore because i don't know i feel like the times have changed i have a cousin too who like leslie she Mm -hmm. loves you know dressing really nice and you know i feel like you know fashion is really her thing and she's always said she wants to be a model and recently she was like i just don't go for it because i'm short and i'm like bitch are you fucking kidding me dude it's because like you guys as tall women have like this essence that as a short woman personally i just never feel like i have it like you walk into, I don't, but I just have an obsession over tall women. I love them. I think they're uh-huh. just so beautiful. Um, it's the long legs, baby girl. Like you walk in and <laughs> like, like I can see you. Like I'm like ooh, and I'm like I walk in and you know I turn some heads, but they gotta like, you know I'm what I mean? I'm sorry. Like I gotta defend my girl Becky G because she's five one. Oh, but and see, like, like come on, it's Becky G. Like so? Becky G's Becky G. You could be you, you, too. you, you exactly. <laughs> I actually like you know I I get it. You know we've been programmed to feel like short women. Yeah, can't especially do it. in like um runway stuff like that yeah. and oh, yeah, like nah, bias like bias has. Oh my god! I'm literally. Here, it's okay. Take <laughs> What's a it called it's though? Code switching. I'm telling you. Brain fart. Brain dead. What are they uh, called? Can we play charades? Yeah, right. Literally. <laughs> what are those bitches called? Runway? Yeah, but what is that Runway? called? Models? No, not that. A like the shows. La pasarela? Fashion show. Pasarela. Not fashion shows. Catwalk. Wait, what? Catwalk. God damn it! Like oh. the actual event. Fashion it's show. Fashion. fashion show. It's a runway event. Run- runway. Uh. Damn. Like in Miss Congenia. Um, oh, yeah, I never saw that movie, so. A contest? But, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, but what's the contest? So a beauty I'm pageant. In, oh, beauty, beauty pageant. Beauty pageant. Oh. God, that was killing me. <laughs> yes, in beauty pageants, you have to be <laughs> And we're back. <laughs> oh, my God, dude, my brain was not functioning. But, yeah, like, when I see those as they're walking down, like, just, that's what I'm saying. Like, in my mind, I'm like, you have to have, like, this. I like, want to say that there has been short women on like Nuestra Vesa Latina there has there has I remember there have been like gorgeous like not tall mm-hmm. women <clears throat> oh yeah. no I, I'm not saying short women aren't beautiful I do believe we are I just think for <laughs> no yeah I'm just saying like you know short. for like beauty pageants in my brain I can't do it if I'm not tall and I don't want to wear some big ass heels I mean you could just be a model I, I, I don't know if do you really want to do runway nah I don't want to be a model okay I want to be I want to be an actress be on it. She wants to be a radio host. I want to like be you. a radio do it. host. Do it. I really do. I think. Let's connect. <laughs> dude, let's connect. I just feel like I have the voice for it more than anything because I'm loud. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, that's good. That's good. As long as you have a personality, like that is all you need. Honestly, everybody or anybody who does podcasting understands how to do radio, radio uh, how to entertain. Obviously, it's different because yeah. there's different ways you have to program your mind. Like you have to talking to a first person, like you're talking to one person who's listening. Mm-hmm. You're not talking to multiple people like in TV. Like in TV, you say, hola, muy buenos días, ¿cómo están ustedes? In radio, it's like, ¿cómo estás tú? Oh, because to make it talk- like more personal. Yeah, you're talking to one person. Right. Yeah, so. I think I do. Um, I think that that's what I like the most about radio, that I would listen 
And I, I always wonder how I would be if the podcast was, was just audio. It was no video. Cause Uh I, I talk a lot with my hands. Same. (laughs) Yes. And I feel like my facial expressions sometimes give off more of what I wanted to say than what I actually said. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's why I was always nervous of, um, because when I was in Valley, the San Bernardino Valley, Uh they had like a cute little radio program and I was like. I should do that. They have and a podcasting like, program now. Like I've, sometimes I've gone and done podcasts there. Oh, amazing. Yeah. I love that that's becoming a, like a, a thing. whole thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> We're in a, you know what I mean? First place, baby girl. Oh, get it. Get it. That part right there. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But hopefully someday. I definitely want to pick your brain a little bit, but off yeah, camera yeah, yeah. just no, because definitely. they're more, I guess, technical questions. That You're, I have wondering on myself. Well, you have a whole demo with your podcast, so that's Thank good. you. That's I yeah. know, dude. We got to stop knocking ourselves. Yes, and yeah. start knocking on them doors because there's some people in radio who sh- definitely should not be there. Let me tell you that. <gasps> you think so? Why? Oh, yeah. oh just attitude. Mm. Uh, yeah, attitude. Lack of respect for people. And that's in multiple radio stations that I've seen, you know? Mm. And I think that, to me, is my biggest pet peeve. When mm. you try to belittle someone and act like you're the last coca-cola in the mm. planeta i'm just like dude like no yeah. no and uh yeah do you um do you feel like you want to or how do you specifically pick if you wanted to move from radio station uh did like me personally yeah like is there like future goal wise is there's like would you ever want to change radio stations or is that more of a i think for the time being i'm good where i'm at um but I think if I were to like move to another radio station, I would probably go back to Univision. Mm. Um, that's just me personally because that's what I know. I have not like talked to other people in other radio mm. shows. I, I mean stations, but I do know them mm. because in radio it's such a small world, and even Latin entertainment, like everybody knows everybody, mm. and you go to events and it's the same mm. exact people, which I'm pretty sure you have you guys have gotten to meet already, like some of these, and you guys don't even realize it. Probably, uh, yeah. And because they've gone to so many different um, radio stations, TV stations, television networks, and mm-hmm. whatnot. But if the opportunity came, like, I would take it. It would just have to be the right opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And your show's in the morning? Yeah. So from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. How do you prepare for that? Like, what time do you even go to bed and wake 10 up? 10 p.m. <laughs> That's pretty late. Yeah, it is pretty late. So, like, these ojeras, like, they're <laughs> definitely real, you know? Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's because when I was working for Omar Argelia, we had to be there because that was an intense show. But it was definitely the foundation of my learning experience mm-hmm. because we had to be there at 2.30 in the morning. Oof. We had to be there as the producers, not Omar Argelia. Right. They would get there a little later, right? Um but yeah we had to have everything prepared and whatnot so when i got to this radio station and they're like hey you can come in at five in the morning i was like yo like, uh, oh, this is glory like y'all don't even know uh so so yeah that, i just prep literally it takes me an hour it's a little easier to prep and i have people who help me amazing women who like run the back end of the show so mm. yeah it's a woman ran show oh it's a woman ran station yes yeah. like this. I'm the only male that's like, you know, co-hosting with another female. And then we have like our amazing DJs and board ops, uh, men. But the forefront is Angelica, Melissa, Icaro, you know? Whoop, so, whoop. Yeah. Who run the world? Honestly. Dude, they said lately, I feel like I've just been surrounded by women, women power. I don't know. I feel like everything's falling into place in my life right now. It probably is. <laughs> like, you'd be surprised. Like, once you start manifesting it, like, I remember when I started working at Univision, uh-huh. I was like, dude, like, I wonder when I'm going to be able to do radio because I committed to my job for two years. And then three months later, I got the opportunity to do, uh, like, morning radio. Mm-hmm. And then uh, six months after, I was, like, already doing the weekend shows. Ooh. And then I started getting clients. I remember when I first had to do my first event, and they're like, hey we need you to go um do this event for like t-mobile and whatnot it's for two hours and i'm like oh yeah i'm down like how much do i need to pay to like do this like nah bro they're paying you 500 (gasps) for two hours to do to just talk that's sick i was like oh okay i'm good like let's do these nice and like that's another way that people don't understand like how to make more money in Mm. radio like you have your base pay then you get paid per commercial and per appearance that you do sick so then you start learning your value right 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 you know when I when I said commercial, I remember when I was little. You know how the commercials would be like, oh, like really fast. Yeah. I thought they had to talk that fast. I no. didn't realize 
that they would just speed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah. The disclaimer. I, yeah, same though, and I would same. try it. I would be like, okay, I, if I if I'm gonna do this, because ra- when I was younger, I was like, okay, I want to make commercials, but for the radio. Yeah, and I was like, I have to learn how to talk that fast, and I would uh-huh. practice on Eminem songs. Oh. <laughs> Because <laughs> I was like, I have to learn how to talk fast, but I stutter, so I could never do it. I'm, I'm not gonna say. Uh, I was gonna be like, one. I want no, to. Know that. Just, what song was it though? You want me to go into into rap battle? Uh, no, 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 no. I, I don't remember. Rap. Honestly, I, like, I don't, don't remember. Please. But I do remember tra- even like Chris Brown put out "Look at Me Now." Mm. I would like play it. I'd be like, okay, here I go again. Like take two. I have to get <laughs> every word right, and it was hard because even. At the time, I was very like active on not saying the n word, so I was oh, like, "Oh yeah. fuck!" Like I can't take a breath there, and it fucks yeah. with the flow. Like, yeah. oh, damn it! <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, have you, um, I guess, still thought about doing acting? I have. I have thought about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, opportunities have presented themselves as well, and I'm just like, well. You know, you go to auditions and you see what happens. If I get a no, then I get a no. And I just keep on going. I mean, I think I have the best teacher to guide me, mm-hmm. with, on like, which is Angelica. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so definitely is a possibility. Will it ever happen? I don't know. And my content, yeah. It, if I don't do a movie or a novella, will I eventually like do it on my own, get my camera and just get some friends and be like, yo, we're doing this? So I was going to do short films. Hey, let's do it. Let's so, do them. <laughs> I'd be Let's be just riding. say, you know, you just never know. Like you now know. the power or like the ball is in our court, Literally. you know, which was so different 10, 15 years ago where you saw people in TV and you, like you said, they're so unattainable. Mm-hmm. Now they're even closer yeah. because of this, the podcast. You just don't know in social media, like it'll go viral. Mm-hmm. You um, working in the industry, do you feel like you felt like a shift specifically with um, them that they feel? Because I know in an interview, I think it was Jennifer Aniston, she's mentioned how back then you like as an actor, you had to work for it a little bit more. And now Mm. like anyone can be an actor. Do you feel like you've heard any like anything like that? Oh, definitely. Definitely. And the same with like anybody can be a singer in Mm -hmm. sense. Like, you know, there's amazing singers who do blow blow up on TikTok and you're just like, damn. You deserved it. And then there's other artists who are just like, Ooh, I don't know if you've, like, you've literally are not that humble and you've shown it yeah. on social media and during interviews and whatnot. Uh, but definitely, I love that for people, you know, that social media can blow them up. Definitely with uh, acting, it's mm-hmm. the exact same thing. There's some amazing actors, but if you're able to, uh, I don't even know how to say this in English. Transmitir eso mm-hmm. en la cámara, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, then, then, yeah, there you go. That that part. <laughs> yes. For our English speakers. <laughs> yeah. Um, then the you're going to be able to do that. Yeah. You know, like there was a, 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 a TikTokers, uh, the Enique boys. Oh, okay. Uh, the Enki boys? Enki. There, yeah. Oh. That the father unfortunately passed and yeah. whatnot. You know, the little boy, like you just knew he, he was, was right. happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he just, he you just felt that from every tiktok yeah. and now he's doing a show with george lopez yeah you know so they're actually having a lot of drama i feel i really feel for them because i think the family is trying to kind of take over their like what the dad left because apparently the oh shit the, no he wasn't officially married he was just juntado with like the mom of his children oh. they weren't married i think i want to say i could be wrong um he was actually still married to his ex-wife so I think the ex-wife wanted to take everything. And Are you married? No. Oh. Thank God. I was going to be like prenup or no prenup? Oh, I'm married. I don't have a prenup though, but oh. I don't, I don't know. Anything. I don't think I want to get married to be honest. I uh. think I want to do more of like a, like a little ceremony. What are they called when people don't get like, like a ritual? A lope? A lope, yeah. Like a ritual? Oh, that's getting, that's Cut getting, our blood. <laughs> like drink each other's blood. We're tied forever. <laughs> Joshua <laughs> Tree where the like, first born. Like, that's that's still hands. getting, you don't want a wedding. I, no, I don't want to do it like officially you, like, go, like to the court. I just want to have like a ceremony uh, where we commit to each other. Got it. Oh, because with eloping, you still you're still yeah. getting married. It's okay, just no, more I don't like wanna, you don't I, tell anybody. No, I just I don't want. To you just want to profess court. each other's love. Yes, like and just kind of like like a, like a commitment ceremony, you know, oh. like with our close like friends, literally <laughs> like good game, and yeah, like I feel like that's kind of like where I'm because I feel like there's like pros and cons to getting married. You mm. know what I mean? Um, that's sweet though. I I I respect that. I yeah. honestly, marriage is hard. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not married, so I'm like, it's yeah. hard, and it's hard in the sense where, like, um, 
like yesterday, my husband's aunt was like, when are you going to have kids? Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, probably not anytime soon. And then, but I always say like, yo no voy a tener. And then they'll be like, pues Alex tampoco, like, como? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Si quiere regados, like, oh. I don't know, that's on him. Like, I don't want any. But like the fact that people feel really comfortable, like crossing that line mm -hmm. with you, like people don't know if I can't have a baby yeah. or yeah. if I've just had a miscarriage, you know, yeah. like it's just so, I feel like that's what's really, really irritating about yeah, marriage. Yeah, that's, it's 2023. Like we cannot be asking these questions. And it was interesting. I was in, in Mexico with Angelica she was filming a show out there so I got to experience like living in Mexico for a whole month oh, and one of the producers there asked uh, another actress there like hey so when are you and your partner having kids little did she know it's like she's been trying for the oh, past five years and I was just like oh metiste la pata yeah you know so yeah because it's it's really just, not anybody's business and it's gross like if I said like if you were like hey are you have are you when are you gonna have a baby and I'm like oh I'm trying we actually yeah. tried last night <laughs> like that's disgusting I just literally just told you that I got cream pied last night like you don't need to know that we don't need to know that honestly couples that are like we're trying I'm like you're, you're having tried sex just yeah. now before sex. this event that's nasty that's, that's crazy that's did you funny. shower <laughs> like oh my god people are so imprudent how do you say imprudent in English oh yeah that's another word. Pru know? It's not prudent, right? No. I don't know. No. Intrusive? No. Intrusive? No, no, that's not it. That doesn't sound right. I didn't pay attention in ELD that much. <laughs> pull, out, pull, out, <laughs> pull out the Yosabo game. Literally, <laughs> literally. We need a freshen up. Oh, it's in, if it's in there, I'm like, I'm going to get it wrong, so. Imprudente. Imprudente. Say it in a sentence. I, I need no seas imprudente. <laughs> no, I, say it in English. <laughs> I need time to think about this. Don't one. be imprudent, dude. Exactly. <laughs> Do you guys uh, reckless? I feel like it's no. overbearing, not reckless. overbearing. Reckless. Reckless. That's not right. Mm. It doesn't sound right. I don't trust Google Translate sometimes. What's Maybe. it called? Do you guys? I don't know why we're talking about that. Do you guys? How do you guys feel about the whole like Frank Ocean um, Coachella drama? I feel very strongly about it. Oh, what, really? What's your opinion? I do, because I think that certain artists get to a point in their career where they're so huge mm. that they don't have to do anything, and mm -hmm. we all just have to be okay with it. Okay, but like, let's compare them to Bad Bunny then. Like, Bad Bunny is right there. Like, he is number one everywhere. Mm -hmm. And he still be going out and performing and whatnot. Like, what's Frank Ocean's excuse? That, and I also think that I'm not a huge Frank Ocean fan, but if I was, I would be offended. Mm, I would be course. offended that, like, I took, you know, the time to go and see you. Like, why do I have to get, like, bullied because I want my performers to perform? Like, mm. you're... And he, I feel like he could have gave us literally nothing. Like, just sat there in his guitar and sang, and mm. it would have been so much yeah. better than what he did. Like, yeah. he didn't even give people the opportunity to connect with him. No. And I saw... I think it was, like, the Rolling, the Rolling Stones that wrote, like, an article... I don't know if it was Rolling Stones, but somebody wrote an article saying like, oh, if you saw Frank Ocean, it's one of the greatest performances in Coachella history. And I was like, what, what? the fuck are you talking I was like, about? Didn't he just play like three songs? And they were like, oh, like, why do we need to see six minutes of your DJ? I mean, of your security guard shaking oh, yeah. his ass. Like, oh. And, he, and then apparently he didn't even like show himself like on the, what is it called? Like the, the screen? screen? Yeah, he didn't. didn't. Like He, he didn't him. come out. Like it was really, mm. it was really weird. And then, okay sing thinking about you and i'm gonna sing it how he didn't sing the song but this is how he was singing like the oh, okay. songs that he was singing okay ready we're gonna go i was like you think i know it like... thinking about... okay oh, just, yeah. just, just do that i'm gonna just it's okay. just an example ready okay. I'm in the the it's sing. awkward right because yeah. the audience oh. is like huh, 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 like oh he would just muffled it he, he wouldn't muffle it but he would kind of go off on his solo oh. and everyone was like huh, huh, huh. Like trying to like have a sing along, but he was go doing his own. Yes, thing. he kept. Like he was trying to be like uh, Christina weird. Aguilera. Doing no, all literally, the runs. I don't even know if it was Christina Aguilera. I don't know what the fuck he was doing, but it was just so awkward. And then he um, would have like two minute pauses between every song and my... just awkward silence. Yeah. Oh, awkward. Um, my cousin, we spoke on the phone recently, and she was like, "I honestly, she was like, I don't know why people are so upset over like the Frank." Um, performance he doesn't know anyone anything oh. i would have just been so happy to just be in the audience and just be there i don't care like what he's done like i just nah. and then she also mentioned which i also feel like it's like worth noting that his brother just passed away oh. so i feel like 
that he he even mentioned i don't know if he said like in a speech yeah, how he, he a was speech. gonna he was supposed to be there with his brother like they had talked oh, about how long ago did he pass he passed think, in 2020 20, 20, 20, i think 2020 20, oh, i don't know one but of those the pandemic 2020. yeah during the pandemic in a car accident he oh. which is away. valid and that's fair but just don't come then. that's what i told my cousin i was like because i to me like i understand like if you're in pain and you know that it might be really hard maybe you know just say be honest like yeah. i just feel like i'm not in a good place to like perform right now mm -hmm. and like out of respect and like love towards my fans i want to be able to give a good performance exactly. and if i know that i can't mm -hmm. deliver you know i'm just not going to do it. and then other people mention like oh well he, you know maybe it's like a contract maybe like he would have to pay millions i'm like well he didn't care you're rich like you? girl like, like what do you mean and then someone was like oh hopefully he does better in um weekend, weekend two oh. i was like he better fucking cancel weekend two bitch and he did. And he hell did. no and, he did. and then the tickets like literally dropped they were still at 400 resale 500 resale value and then they dropped to like 200 150 no way i was like looking at him yeah. and i was like oh they dropped oh now i know why <sighs> we should have waited and gone weekend two oh, could have got uh, them bitches for yeah. cheap yeah literally. i had a lot of fun though it was my first coachella oh, i only really? went two days i've but, only yeah. gone once and what? Who'd you see? Uh, well, it was well, it was Bad Bunny and J Balvin. So I went 2019. Oh, oh my yeah. god, were they good? Oh my god, it was freaking amazing. Like <sighs> I had like a little teddy bear named Benito, and oh. like I was taking him everywhere, and uh, it was just like a good time. And that's what I ended up na naming my dog oh, <laughs> Benito cute. after Bad Bunny. Oh, so you're how old is your dog? Like he is uh, a year and a half. So oh 18 my god, months. he's a baby. Yeah, 90 pound <gasps> baby. Yeah, he's big. Yeah. Oh my god, talking about babies, you guys. My cat gave birth today. Oh. She had five little kittens. Oh my god. And she was such a champ because I've seen people, like people, I've seen cats videos like giving uh -huh. birth mm. and they're like screeching and like meowing oh, so yeah. loud. Like yeah. it sounds terrible. Like they're in so much pain and my cat did not make one noise. <gasps> she was like, like mm. she was literally like, yeah, like, oh. <laughs> was it her first she's time? Like, she farted. She's like, ew. <laughs> she's like, ew, touch it. She's like, ew, you grab it. <laughs> hey, cats be like that. Pick they got attitude. Yeah, she's like, you, you clean it. <laughs> no, literally, like, she was such, she had all five of them in like an hour and a half. It oh, was sure. her first time. Like, it was her first time. Damn. And it was funny because my sister, it, it, my sister got the cat, but I mean, we all like it grew on all of us. Mm. And my sister went to go shower, and she when she went back into her room, she said, "Oh my gosh, she's giving birth on my bed!" <gasps> and literally, she was on <laughs> my sister's bed giving Damn. birth. Ew. She's got to be the madrina now. <laughs> literally, literally. And did, but you know what? Like my sister loves her cat so much. She was like, "It's fine. Like I'll just wash the sheets." Like it wasn't even like as bloody as we thought it was gonna be. Like, mm. do was, they? How do you know that she's about to give birth? Like, how do they she, act? We they she didn't act like anything. That's what we're kind of caught off guard we knew that the time was coming because it mm -hmm. takes like just a little over two months for them yeah. to like mm -hmm. give birth mm -hmm. so we knew like it was time um and the only difference i guess is that she was just like being more lazy like she wasn't moving as much mm -hmm. anymore and uh she was licking her private like a mm -hmm. lot so i feel like those are the only things that were like okay maybe and she didn't even like give us a heads up nothing like hey you, you want to come with me yeah because like, dogs hide oh yeah really? they'll like look for their spot and they'll like dig it up oh, and sure. that like they'll they'll like they'll have a specific place where they're gonna get yeah, like oh. birth yeah cats like to get under blankets too and my cat well she did that she was under the blanket and then oh. emma said that she was moving under the blanket so she thought like oh my god no girl you need to get out of my bed but when she lifted the blanket, oh, they were there? she no she was already like bleeding and like the bed oh. was wet like if her um Damn. water popped or whatever yeah. Yeah. yeah so she was like kind of like it was Are they starting still there or did you guys move them no she moved them already yeah but oh. she, and she let you guys grab them because i was gonna say yeah she, what's that i was gonna say that like like did she let us um yeah she let us grab them she was like purring because we were like kind mm. of like just there with her mm. like telling her good job mommy you know like you know you're doing good you know we're like petting her and she was purring she was like making little biscuits like when cats <laughs> no she was such a trooper like she was she did really good so what? if you guys want a kitten, I was gonna say, what are you gonna do with the cat? Yeah, we were many? we already look. There's five. We're already oh. looking for people to rehome them. Oh. Um, I think we might keep one. Mm. Um, but she's such a good mom. Like, um, I did grab one at, at the beginning. She was letting us grab it, but then I feel like the kittens were getting annoyed, so they started crying. So when they cry, she like gets up immediately mm. and she oh. she takes up. She's like, that's enough. She's like, all right, give it to me. Yeah, <laughs> she like she takes she bites it out of her your hand and she puts it back with like the rest of the litter. Oh, uh, you but know yeah, what I love cute. about cats that like if I just imagine me being a little tiny person, I'm like they're like little like tigers and lions, yeah, yeah. little panthers. Because <laughs> I love seeing like the lions the way they carry their babies mm -hmm. too. They carry the cats yeah, like yeah. they bite them like that. Yeah. How does it not hurt them? I have no clue. I don't know, dude. Because my dog's pregnant right now and I hate her. Ooh. I want to kick her in the stomach. Oh, she's the got that hormones. who got her pregnant 
Dude, the ugliest fucking dog that you can ever imagine in the history of the world. A like, no, dude, it was. Like, <laughs> it's, okay, it's probably like a mix of like a boxer and a terrier and uh-huh. like oh, just God. the ugliest fucking dog. Like from the streets? Em- yeah, I don't know if he's from the streets, but he lives in the back, like where like there's like a trailer. Not, like not like a trailer, trailer home. park dog <laughs> <laughs> not like a trailer park home like the trailers uh-huh. like the semi trucks or whatever there's a parking garage behind my house uh-huh. and i feel like he's just the fucking trailer yeah. you caught dog. them pegados or what i didn't catch them pegados Damn. but this motherfucker walked her home oh like my God. he brought her back oh he likes it. respectful oh, he likes it. dude it took everything in me not to kick the shit out of him like dude You're i like, was hey, yo, so I just sad your dog. <laughs> oh my no really he was like hey bitch you good all right like bye and then he walked off <laughs> Like, been back? I've never seen him again. Oh, he damn. said, be back in three months, bitch. Damn. He's like, I'm gonna... To pick up my son. He's gonna go like that. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, I'm scared because he's bigger than her. So I think I have to take her to the vet to get an abortion. Oh. Abortion? Because when they're too big for the dog, like, he was bigger her than, body, than her. her. Choice. Like, let her decide. No. Well, she could die. Oh, it was... Okay, so Yeah, it's like, like really it's because, big. like, when the dog is... Yeah, he was a lot bigger than her. Um, I don't know even know how he... But I know he got her because she had stopped bleeding, but her, like, vagina mm. was still swollen. Mm. And when she came back, that shit was dripping. And I was like, uh, who popped your cherry, bitch? Oh. And then I looked over, like... So she was behind the wall. I looked and he was like standing there, like oh. watching her. Oh, okay. Oh my God. I was so livid. And now her titties are getting fat. Oh. And she's the worst dog I've ever Wait, had. Wait, how long has she already been pregnant? For two weeks. Like, is that already past the? I don't know. Take them bitches out because <gasps> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She's no. About to have a C-section. That's crazy. It's because she could die. Like, she actually oh, yeah. could die. If she wasn't, then I'd have the ugly fucking dogs. But, but like, I wonder how dogs actually even get an abortion, like C section. I think they'd have to give her a C section. Cause okay. You need oh, dog God. insurance. Guys, for that. don't don't judge me. But one time my other dog, I have mm. a lot of dogs. Oh, okay. But two of them are little. This one was she's a cocker spaniel. The ugliest oh, yeah, cocker small. spaniel you've ever seen in your life. She looks like an old lady. No, literally, weird, she actually. looks like it the clown. Yeah. Yes. Oh. yes. Oh my trauma she's just popped ugly. up. I'm sorry. She's ugly. And she's the one pregnant? Yes. Oh, no wonder she was with the trailer park Dude, dog. Dude, yes. yes. But either way, even if she's ugly, as del- es fina. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? But oh, it's like one of them. Okay. Yeah, so my other, I have a Pomeranian. That bitch is Fina too. And she also <laughs> picked like some ugly fucking rat dog from the street. Why women do that though? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> honestly though. I don't know. <laughs> Bad. Oh. It's because, you know, if you're cute, you got to have an ugly man. Like, that's just the way it works. It's my cousin the best is in Mexico. Work like, that. like, yeah, no, my cousin in Mexico said that. She's like, I only date ugly people porque esas pendejas no me lo van a bajar. And I was just like, oh, I mean, I That's guess. what you think. That's what you think. Pero los feos lo se creen. Yeah. And then they turn around and do you worse. They're all going to cheat. Just at least oh, that's fuck. true. I feel like I picked, like, cute, me and Alex are nice, good yeah, 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 equals. Sure. Like, we good, compliment good. each other. This bitch picked the ugliest dog on the street. And my uncle actually named him El Chilaquil. Uh. <laughs> And, dude, he would come and wait at the gate for her. Like, they were in love. Respectfully. Aww. And he got her pregnant, and I was like, no. So I, I, not a lot of vets do this, because now I know it's in, not nice. Oh, but, okay. like, I gave her, they gave her, like, a morning after pill. But then after that, she couldn't have puppies. Uh, so it, like, fucked her, her up. Stare, you, uh, I don't know what I gave her, and I feel bad. Oh but also God. not really, because my brother's dog is also Pomeranian, and she had puppies, and she looks fucked up. Like oh, that shit. bitch is ugly now, cause it it makes them like it makes their same like a woman like it makes their hair fall out, oh, their shoot. titties hang all gross. Like it takes like two years for their hair to grow back normal. Oh. So I was like, no. And this dog, like she's my entire universe and world. Mm-hmm. I love her more than I love anything in the world. So you're gonna. Go so get I was her like, abortion. no, like I can't have her like Ruined suffer her through life that. Like yeah, that? I was like, no, daughter, please. <laughs> she's like, no, Dan, I'm not giving up my dream, exactly. <laughs> giving up yours. And I was like, oh. Damn. But yeah, so fuck my bitch ass dog and fuck the bitches behind me who got her pregnant. Yeah. But. The bill's coming to their owner. No, dude. I, oh, I, really? I've literally, ha- I've taken her to the vet at least like 17 times and I've had her for like a year. <gasps> Why? She's a dumbass. Like, what is, like, does she, whoa, okay. Um, <laughs> like, like, now <laughs> like, let me ask, like, what are you doing Peter, to make no. sure she's not oh. She's a dumbass. For shots, but yeah. Oh because when I was like training my dog, they're like, sometimes like you need training. Okay, no, no. no. Listen, <laughs> let me tell you this, bitch. So I got her as an emotional support dog for my mom. <laughs> And then she, my She's mom like, never came back, so I kept her. She got like what is called. You can't a, say that. Like I don't get the context. Like is is she okay? I'm not done. Hold on. It's it's a it's <laughs> it's, it's a it's a long. Oh, my mom's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's back though. 
<laughs> yeah, she's back now. All but right. so she got what's called like a cherry eye, which is literally just the fact that some vein or I don't know what the fuck in their eye comes out. Okay. And you have to get it surgically removed. This was when she was like three, four months. Aww. So I was like, okay, whatever. I, I took her to the vet. Everything was fine. The vet is our friend. So he was like, just leave her. I'll take her home and you guys can pick mm. her up from my house. On the way to his house, her legs were really long. So she reached over her cone, nipped off the like stitches and bled all over like the vet's car. And she was like dying. He had to like get off oh, and shit. give her like an emergency like suture. So then whatever, I bring her home, does it again. Oh, oh no, he takes her home, does it again, and then I bring her home and she does it again. Oh god. No. So she w- so we had to like really have her on a watch, but it wasn't my fault. Like I wasn't, you know, being a bad <laughs> owner. She was just a really bad dog. Yeah. And after that, why did I She's take like, her to the She's like, "Let me go, I want to die." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, she got kidnapped and they gave her back like Did you like did you pay something? Like Yeah, I gave I I love her. I do oh, love her. Okay. I don't want to say that I don't. I she just ha- well, I hate her. How much was the reward? I was going to give a lot because I, my husband was really connected to the dog. Okay. So I was like, okay, I'll pay like max like 500, 800 maybe. What you end up paying? I only give them 300 because they didn't know I was speaking Spanish. And they're, oh. and I heard them inside. ¿Cuánto te va a dar antes de que se las des? Oh, it'll yeah. be our own people. Yeah. Swear. And then <laughs> when I only gave them like 300, the whole family came outside, by the way. They to wanted like, to beat you. Yeah, ass. they wanted to be like. Like, oh, that's all you're going to give? Give me the dog back. No, literally. And they were, I heard her too, like, no, de, no le des la comida, no te dio nada. And I was like, bitch, I don't want your pedigree ass food. This bitch is eating like salmon at home. Like, I don't care. Farmer's dog. <laughs> and I was so happy. So I was like, whatever. So she's put me through hell. So the fact that she's pregnant now is infuriating. Oh, yeah. She's, she's, she's a mess. She's a black sheep of the family. Yeah, for sure. She's the worst dog I've ever had. But it's the one you be paying the most for. I know. Which is annoying. I have six dogs, bro, and she's the most annoying dog I have. This is why I don't have pets. No. That's why cats are better. They're uh, they're independent. They're just so chill. I just camp though. Oh my goodness! Like I used to be a cat hater for sure. Oh really? But then my sister got a cat, and now now I'm like obsessed with my cat. I don't think I care about for others. Right, right, right. But I love my cat. And now I'm a cat advocator. That's how I feel sure. about my dogs, though. Like, I think my dogs, except for her name's Dory, except for Dory. I'm sorry. The bitch is ugly. But like all my other dogs, I think they're the most beautiful of their breed that I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Dory's something I'm about else. to advocate for my golden. Retriever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're about to mate our dogs because yeah. we got little goldens. Yeah. We're going to be like, what are we like, compadres over oh here? My oh, God. my God. That's so true. <laughs> yes. Why do you want, why do you feel that your dog needs to do that? Because I know you uh, said, like, oh, I want him to experience that. Oh, I just want him to have puppies. My mom's always like, oh, you don't want him to have puppies? And I'm like, I guess. You're like, I want him to pop his cherry. He's yeah. a virgin. Keep his lineage going. Well, yeah. Honestly, <laughs> more than anything. It's like, well, and if, like, you want a puppy, go ahead. Grab a puppy. If somebody else wants a puppy, all right, go ahead. Like, why not? Do you feel like that about, like, having kids? Because I, I feel like a lot of oh, guys are like. giving my kids away? Like, I don't <laughs> no, no, no. I, no. I was like, wait, what I mean, I've been mean, like, oh, I want to keep, like, I want some, like, a son that's, like, my blood. I thought, oh, oh yeah. yeah. You know what? I was very much like that for a long time. Now I've come to the conclusion. I'm like, if I don't have a partner by like 33, Jesus is age. I'm about to have my own kids. Jesus <laughs> is age. I'm about like, you know, I'm about to start like looking for a surrogate mom or something and just do it on my own. Oh, for that's real? Cool. No, for real. 100%. Like I, I, you know what? For the longest, I've wanted to be a dad, and I've always had like a paternal aspect of me. Mm. That I'm like, you know, if I don't find oh, the right one and whatnot to have kids with, like I'll just have them on my own. Because I'm looking I am for a enough. stepdad. You know? Oh, okay. I just like, <laughs> I was like, are you single? <laughs> I'm like, oh my god! I was like, god. and I'm looking for a surrogate. <laughs> I'm looking to, for something to plant my seed in. <laughs> I was like, it'll be cheaper, honestly. <laughs> no, honestly, I could never. I if there was a way that I well, I know there is a way, but I can't afford it. But if there was a way I could just like have another child, but not have to go through like the physical experience of it, I would do it. You, but it's it was, so interesting. Some women are like have the worst experience, and some women have they're like just yeah, like your cat. Yeah, they just come out all no, nice and easy. No, my mm-hmm. my birthing experience was amazing. Like I I had no symptoms throughout my whole nine months of pregnancy. My birth was smooth. Like everything mm. was great. I for me, what really fucks me up was like the mental aspect. Gotcha. I was the like postpartum. Ooh, and during I was depressed like Damn. heavily like that that's what fucked me over that i felt like i couldn't like enjoy 
like the process like the journey mm-hmm. but which i think also had to do with the fact that i was young mm-hmm. I, well not like 16 but i was 21 and i was like Practically oh my, a teen mom. i was like a, i was i felt like a teen mom i yeah. felt embarrassed looking not even gonna lie i was like no what the fuck and like, were you alone i'm in my no no no. i was with my okay. partner at the time and i was like dude this is my peak ho era like i'm out <laughs> on the streets like and now i'm pregnant like how could this happen to me and yeah, so it was it was really hard. Like I feel like I definitely was in denial, which like just didn't I I didn't I feel like I caused my own depression, if that makes mm. sense. Like mm. by was just, he supportive though? Oh, uh, he was like the best. Okay, good. good Thank good. God. That's I feel like what pulled me through. And even once my son was born and the postpartum depression hit me like really bad, um, he like definitely stepped up. Like if it wasn't for him, my mom like ba- like babysitting well not babysitting what the fuck like taking care of the baby, I feel like I'd be like. I wouldn't have no, made it. Kudos to that. Kudos to it, like yeah. men who are like that and supportive. Because no, I know so many percent. men who are their wives are pregnant and they're like, I'm not picking up the trash. Like Dude, you do that. And yeah, you're just like, what the fuck? Yes. Your wife is about Boy, to pop. Yeah, yada. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that shit makes me mad. Oh, trust me. And I'm like, I got to stay quiet because yeah. you picked them. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's that's a tough part. I know. That's true. And then you want to tell them like, you deserve better. And they're like, oh, I'm already married. What yeah, do I do? I'm already here. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Do you, um, what do you think your paternal, like, th- la paternidad, like, sí. the sale? Because I try to look for it, uh-huh. I think, because sometimes I'm like, do I really, same thing, like, I'm like, do I really not want kids or am I just tricking myself into thinking If you I repeat don't want it to yourself it? enough, you, be, you, be, you start believing what mm. you tell yourself, you know? And if you constantly say, like, I don't want kids, yeah. you're, you're going to believe that. I feel yeah. like I just mean it, but I don't want to more than anything because I'm like, no, like, it's, shouldn't this come out? Like, shouldn't, as I get older, I want to yeah. have, like, that it maternity. Should feel, you feel yeah. like it should come naturally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's funny to me when I hear it, especially men talking about it. Yeah. yeah, I think it's like, well, for women, more than anything, it's like that illusion, maybe societal mm-hmm. pressures, mm-hmm. like, oh, your role is to become a mom and whatnot. Mm-hmm. For me, it's always been because like when I was growing up, I had to take care of my brothers a lot just because my parents were always mm-hmm. fighting and whatnot mm-hmm. and going through um, like some, uh, what, what did, uh, oh my God, Will Smith's wife call it? A, oh, entanglement. An entanglement. <laughs> oh, wow. So that's what my parents were going through and whatnot. So I felt like I was that support system for my brothers. And then as I started getting older, I was very much that so for my friends and, and whatnot. And just the thought of like creating your own person that is similar to you and maybe not even by blood, but just raising them and seeing. Like, all right, cool. Like, my parents' thought process was very antiquated, but mm. I turned out like this. Like, I wonder with everything that I know, like, how is my child or daughter mm-hmm. going to be? Yeah. And I, since I never had any sisters, like, I don't have any sisters, uh, I'm like, oh, I wonder how I would be, like, raising a daughter, uh, you know? So That is so sweet. Hashtag girl dad. Yeah. Uh, I feel like it would be a great dad. So, But whatever, like, you know, comes whatever and healthy, I'm yeah, cool yeah, with. Yeah. I truly feel, and I feel like that's, like, it sounds like you want it for the right reasons Mm -hmm. because i feel like one i feel like one point that i've made in the past i guess to like mention to people is like if you want kids simply because they're trying to fill a void or you feel like it's just the next step or you feel like your life is missing something so but not not missing something in the way of like you know i just you know i'm ready for that next step so you know that's no just in the kind of like because i'm not gonna this is something i used to think that my pregnancy was not planned Mm. but i remember when i was pregnant i was like well this is gonna give me something to do right like this was like this is like this was (laughs) like like a to like make sense of like what was like the huge like life-changing thing that was gonna happen to me but i didn't realize how big of a life change it was going to be Mm -hmm. and then i remember listening to this podcast one time and it was like explaining that a lot of people you know go into parenthood for the wrong reasons Mm. and then they kind of resent the children and the experience and then they hate it because they didn't do it like with the right intention Mm -hmm. and like Mm. you know they kind of just have this idea that society paints about what it's like to be a parent but they don't actually know like the ugly fucking side of being a parent that's like really hard Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i feel like damn like that um so i feel like it's rare because i'm not gonna lie i do listen to conversations when people are like when they talk about why they want kids and sometimes i'm like fuck please don't do it yeah. <laughs> like just just based off like how they're talking yeah. you know yeah you, you can kind of tell like don't have kids please don't don't fucking do it yeah. but listening to you though i don't get that yeah. vibe. i get like you're, no you're, and you're, it's you're, you're an amazing dad because oh, i i i can tell you're very kind and uh, i i love kind dads like i had the thanks. kindest yeah. dad in the entire world mm-hmm. and i feel like um he was very naturally a teacher mm-hmm. so he was like my dad was always a person that 
you know how like it was just that uncle where you have like you always go to their house yeah. and like oh, okay. he carried with like all the cousins that was very much my dad like my That's dad had dope. 10 kids with him and he handled everybody Aww. but i think it was because he liked being around the kids like he mm. liked going to amusement parks and he Aww. liked doing kid shit he yeah. liked like taking us to the movies yeah so i love when i hear like men talk about it because it's like we need kind dads yes a thousand percent kind dads are 10 10 i love (laughs) honest and i I have a lot of my friends from high school they're dads now and i love seeing them because they're the sweetest like same with the moms but like the dads obviously it's different Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, just because like society in a way has put them in a different picture like and it's so interesting because obviously like within me and my friends we've done a lot of internal work as men and and it was so Sort of like, well, how can we get applauded when we do something for our kids that the same thing women do, but they don't get applauded. applauded. It's like, oh shit, he changed his diaper. And you're like, well, but like she changes it. Yeah, yeah, bitch, because I'm in the bathroom. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So it's sort of like trying to destigmatize or deconstruct all that uh, within my friend group because at the end of the day, that'll eventually be a domino effect within our kids. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully that that's the plan. Who knows? Because like you said, having kids is not easy i'm sure that's why i got a dog to try it out first even yeah. though like it's probably not the same so don't come at me <laughs> <laughs> i feel like it is it, um the, i feel like just children eventually you're gonna have to like shape their mind and mm. i feel like for me that's kind of like one of the things that i kind of beat myself sometimes i'm like damn like it brings up a light to like the negative aspects of me because sometimes mm-hmm. i'm like damn i don't want my son to get this from me Uh, you know what i mean like i don't want this part of me to go to him you know and sometimes that can kind of make it come out more you know because like i'm suppressing it but it's it's tough but i'm doing good like i proud of you thank you i feel like i've come a long way i definitely felt like resentful towards like motherhood for such a long time just Mm -hmm. because i felt like i it wasn't what i wanted for myself but i feel like the moment i started embracing it and being like okay like this is my life now. And, yeah. you know, I do love my son at the end of the day. It doesn't mean I don't. It's mm-hmm. just kind of like the shift was just so huge for me. Mm. Um, but once I accepted it, I was like, okay, like, I like this. This is cool. Like, Why do you why do you give yourself until 35? Well, 33. 33. 33. Oh, shit, my bad. I don't know what that was in my head. <laughs> Jesus is age, honestly. That's like, just, you're like, yeah. okay, this is well, it. Well, and that's also the age my dad had me. You know, oh, which, okay. which is interesting because I'm like, dude, that was 31 years ago. Like, 33 is also like old for a Mexican uh, dad, and my yeah. mom was 21. Um, <gasps> you know, so yeah. Questionable. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. Yeah, and I always told my mom, it's like, mom, mom, se comieron el mandado antes de que se casaron. Like, y'all definitely <laughs> had me before your wedding day. Like, how is it that y'all got married at the end of January and I was like popped up early October? Oh, they had to get that wedding in quick. I'm like, <laughs> yep. Before she started noticing, she's like, estás loco, estás pendejo. Like, you were born at eight months. That's good. That's you were good. Like, and I'm like, do the mm. math, mother, please. <laughs> Come on. I don't know. How many brothers do you have? I have two younger brothers. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just three of you guys. Yeah, so there's only three of us. Mm. And yeah, we all live together. My parents live in Mexico. So so, oh, your parents live in Mexico? Yeah, they oh, were able sure. to go back and retire after, like during the pandemic. Oh, oh love like, that. We got that. We got this house paid. Do you miss yeah. it? Like, do you miss them, like having them here? You know, yes, my mom's cooking. Like, oh, oh my God. Like, I've had to, like, I've already lived on my own when I lived in LA and then lived in San Bernardino. Mm-hmm. Like, I was already gone for 10 years that I had to learn how to cook for myself. But then when I moved back home during the pandemic, she was still here for a year. My dad had left and it was just getting spoiled with good food. Like, all I knew how to do, and to this day, still like rice, chicken, uh, the essentials. Like, yeah. Yeah. Luckily, my youngest brother, like, I got to give it to him. Like, he is an amazing cook. And he likes it. Mm-hmm. So every day I'm like, Emmy, what you cooking today? Hey, like, oh, he lives with you? Yeah, That's yeah. We, it's just us three. So. Oh, do you guys live together? Dope, yeah, we dope, live together. Dope. Yeah. Just, oh, that is so cute. <laughs> Dude, the other day when you posted you and your sisters, I was like. Oh, you live just with your sisters? Help? No, no, no. Oh, I, I was like. No, but oh, they were okay. doing cute sister shit. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. I love that. I just love sibling love. I think it's sweet. Do you yeah. guys like hug each other? Uh, I try to. And I try to tell them like, oh, I love you as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Just because it was definitely something really hard for us yeah. growing up with our dad. Mm-hmm. And then I had to like start normalizing it for my dad. So now we like say it often just because obviously it's something different for them. But I'm like, I don't ever want you to go from this earth. And I don't ever want to go without ever saying i love you yeah so i try to say that with my brothers as often and i'm like yo say i love you or say back the fuck yeah yeah yeah. that's uh, me too and And i feel like it always takes one person to start before like the domino effect starts happening where it 
Because I've noticed that the more I've become affectionate with my siblings, the more they started doing it back mm-hmm. to me, for sure. Yeah. I feel like I've always been affectionate, but definitely, like, getting my parents to tell me they love me back was... Which is weird, because we've always, like, known we loved each mm-hmm. other. We've never been, like, right. strained like that. But I don't... Saying the actual words, right. mm-hmm. it was weird. Even saying them... I feel like saying them in Spanish that is so much more, more meaningful. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes when I'm, like, mad at my mom, I'll be like, okay, I love you, bye. Yeah. And then when I'm, like, in a good mood, I'll be like, okay, bye, mommy, te amo, like... So I feel like saying te amo is so huge yeah. mm-hmm. that what like it took a while for everyone to be like, what? Why are you saying that? Especially because mm-hmm. every time after I hang up, I don't give a fuck what I'm talking to. I'm yeah. like, okay, bye. Like, well, obviously, if I love you, I'm gonna be like, hey, bye, I love you. <laughs> if I don't, yeah, like, if bye, I bitch. don't, you just expect a goodbye, bitch. <laughs> yeah, <count it. laughs> yeah. yeah. So saying like I love you, I noticed everyone else started doing it to me, yeah. mm-hmm. but that was the plan all along. And it's yeah. funny, like for me, it started because my friends started saying it to me mm. and i found that weird coming from another guy you mm. know but because they like one of them was going into therapy like he started going and like obviously you know therapy mm. work and whatnot so he started saying it more just to be comfortable and i was just like whoa the first time he said it and i was like literally at, at work and he was on speaker he's like all right bro see you later i love you i was like what you were like, fuck? are you? Yeah, yeah, in no, love with no, 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 no. What does this mean? Yeah, no, no, no. So once I hung up, like my coworkers were like, and I'm like, I'm not gay. Like I like, promise, pro- like, oh my you God. know. But they're like, no, that's cool. But I, then I realized, you know, that's it's like society saying, yeah. like, as men, you can't say I love you. Like you should. Yeah. Definitely. So, yeah. Sure. I'm a big hugger. I believe in hugging is therapeutic. And I also just saw this thing that said like. The reason hugs feel so good is because you don't have a heart on this side. Oh. So when you have both of them, oh, it calms you down. That's yeah. sweet. I thought that was the cutest. Yeah. You need a hug yeah. for 20 seconds. That's when it starts to do Release what it the... needs to do yeah. in your brain. Yeah. And no we're wonder... Latinos. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. The what? We're Latinos. Like I like hug people or yeah. when I was working in Univision and it's weird working in this company now because every time you saw somebody, you kissed them on the cheek. Yeah. yeah. Like at work. So it was like, oh, buenos dias, buenos dias, buenos dias. Like literally you were going door to door kissing people saying hi to people that's you know? cute honestly when we when we came in here and you hugged us i was like thank god because oh. i hate when people just stand up and i'm like i'm gonna hug you oh. like yeah that's just how i am like i'm gonna hug you so yeah. when you we were like hey i was like okay cool yeah you just never know nowadays never know. cancel culture and then after the like, pandemic like kissing Ooh, people. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. all right besties we're going to shout out our patreon friends hey hey i feel like i need some like Beatbox or something. A boots, a boots. I was like, don't ask me. <laughs> boots and cuts and boots and cuts. And. What is Patreon, Steph? Patreon is an app where you can get exclusive content of besties and our shenanigans for a short, short, small percentage of your wallet. Yes. A tiny. <laughs> so it's do like it. a Starbucks. Just like a sliver. Like support. you don't even see it. It's like, it's like what tumbles in your laundry machine. Honestly Just... support Latino creators. Yes. yes. And for our Patreon episode today, Jose here is going to do a little strip for you guys. Whoop, whoop. So if you guys want to see that, it... tune in. You better, better subscribe. So many people ask me that on social media. Like, I, I've been seeing your little pictures. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Mr. Cheeky. I was like, okay. I was like, go off king. Oh, Thanks. God. All right. So, want to shout out Dayanara Lara, Woo-hoo. Julia Tello, Woo-hoo. Giselle Ventura, Woo-hoo. Jimena Hernandez, Woo-hoo. Jasmine Jaimes, Dimara Cervantes, Yee-yee. La Fe A. Um, okay. What's your name, girl? <laughs> or boy. Miss um, Anna. Miss Anon. I honestly, when people have like a Nickname. nicknames, I'm always like, what's your name? Who are you? Yeah, are really you a family member? <laughs> oh my God, hey, please. That's no. dope. Wait. Why not? Someone's not on there right now that used to be on there that I thought it was my family member. So Uh-oh. what's going on here? Andra Casillas, Noemi <laughs> Polanco, Cynthia, Catalina Cordova, Evelyn women. Perez Villa, mm-hmm. Alexi Perez, Carla, Catalina Gonzalez. Claudia Núñez, Valeria Mesa, Ode hey. Pérez, Rogelio Cepeda, Nereida Kiri. I can't pronounce that. Can you pronounce this? Word. Kirino. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alison Mejia, Arled Ornelas, Juliana Baez. Uh-huh. Damn, y'all sound fancy and rich. Like, Dude, I know. <laughs> Victoria Garcia, CS, Lucero Chavez, Jairo Avalos, Rocio Carrillo, Joselín Alvarez, Sofia, Denise Chavez, Laura mm. Peña. These are all 
I feel like they're all my cousins. I know. Trust. I know. Shout out to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jennifer Martinez, Tatiana, Michelle Long. I feel like that's the only non Latino <laughs> uh, name. She could be. Kimberly, half and half. Yeah, yeah. Kimberly Ordonez, Carlos Mor, Sam Montelongo, Yair Rodriguez, mm -hmm. Roberto, Eliana Landeros, Ariel del Carmen Medina. Yo soy Mando, Stephanie, Maria Flores, Bebo, Naomi Maldonado Cuevas, Maite Milan, Yulisa, and last but not least, Kike y el Six Pack Perez. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Oh my gosh, That's thank awesome. you guys so much for the support. You guys are amazing and we love creating more content for you guys. So let us know if you guys want to see anything specific on the Patreon. We're going to honestly come up with more like crazy shenanigans because mm. yeah. we've been We've been brainstorming, brainstorming a lot of ideas yeah. for fun, exclusive content to bring on the Patreon and we're excited for you guys to see it and we hope you enjoy it. And Here's a little sneak peek. Relationship. yeah yeah i had mm. kept her number still and like up until recently like i went to mexico for work for a whole month and i was in an hacienda Ooh. So, oh my god i know i'll show you guys videos in a oh bit my so god. Can be that looks, i yeah. always wanted to yeah so i was living like that like mexico novella lifestyle Ooh, la. um so being alone and in solitude i was like fuck why am i thinking about this person right now yeah so like i hit her up again and she blatantly said I do not like you. <gasps> I don't want anything. I hope this makes it clear. And I'm like, loud and clear, you know? Oh just my to God. mess up. So what again, I was bitch. not the toxic I'm sorry, person. But a fucking whore. <laughs> Dude, that's fucked up. Because I feel Thank like you. you don't have to be an asshole. You like don't. you can reject people not being an asshole. Yeah. But I honestly think I needed that. That's so true. at that point, and you were in a hacienda, so you're like, yeah. bitch. Anyway, yeah, like, you were like, I let me go actually, say hi to the cows. No, I was <laughs> actually just texting to rub it in. Look at where I'm at. <laughs> and where are you? Really Do quick. you see that? That was crazy. Yeah. Go subscribe. Yeah. But thank you so much for coming on. Is there anything you want to plug? Anything you want to tell the viewers about some projects that maybe you have going on? Yes. Oh, let me see. Like, well, definitely check out my podcast, HLA Podcast. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now, I'm just finishing editing some content. I filmed the whole season in Mexico Ooh. called Historias de Mi Pueblo because <gasps> I really wanted to get to know my town. Mm -hmm. And Love so that. I just started interviewing like the people in my town and to That's get to know so them. Nice. So hopefully Amazing. I get to do that throughout all of Mexico. <gasps> I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, love that thank you and then uh, follow me Jose Quintero TV on Instagram and listen to Cali 93.9 La Vale Show de 5 a 10 de la mañana hey! <laughs> can y'all tell your radio host <laughs> <laughs> yes and thank you guys besties so much for tuning in you do the outro because I did the intro what is uh, I got a brain fart how okay. do we do it sure, like comment share subscribe Share, like, comment, subscribe. Tell your mommy, your daddy, your ball headed granny, yes. your primas. <laughs> Sending y'all love and light. Mwah. Love you guys. Bye, guys. Bye, besties. Dude, your voice was so cool. Oh, yeah, really? That was so <laughs> cool. You. That really was dope. Yeah, you have it for sure. I was like, mm -hmm.